Did you ever think about playing professionally? Yeah, and I liked it tonight. I liked being on the other side of the posse. Yeah. <laughs> my... Speaking you know of what your drummer said. What? He sure. said, if this music thing doesn't work out, you can always run for president. <laughs> That's kind of the way I like you twist, Chuck. You carry a lot of people with you. You have more people than Hammer. You know, I mean, they're like <laughs> a lot of guys in your posse today. But I'm, I'm glad you're here. Let, let's Thanks. get right down to things. Um, what do you like? The old Elvis or the... Uh... <laughs> Which stamp? You know, I know you're an Elvis hey, fan. I led a national crusade for the young Elvis. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, when you get old, you, I mean, he got fat like me. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, oh, I think it has to be the young Elvis. That's when he had all his energy and, and, uh, and real raw, new, fresh power. I mean, you know, it would be, it would have been a shame to do the old stamp. Yeah. It had to be the new one. Yeah. You, you were here recently. I didn't get to meet you. You went to my church. I sure did. And, I met your uh, pastor. He's a wonderful man. He is. He, he is. He's guided me well. Um, when I talk to kids at church, um, when I talk to kids in D.A.R.E. classrooms, there are a lot of young people who don't think they should vote at all anymore. They feel that you're all the same. Why are you not the same? I'm not the same because I'm talking about things in this election that I've been working on for years that I really care about. I was in South Central L.A. three years before the riot occurred. I came out here and all the politicians always go to Hollywood to meet the movie stars and the entertainers, you know, to raise money. And I, I gave a speech here three years ago and I asked to go to South Central L.A. and meet with uh, people from UNO and SCOC, those community organizations, because I could see how terrible it was and how things could get out of hand. I met with a dozen sixth graders about my daughter's age who told me their biggest fear in life was being shot going to and from school. I mean, and the reason those kids should vote is that this country's been around for more than 200 years because more than half the time the people have been right and have elected the kind of leadership we needed to move our country through crisis periods. And we're in trouble now. We've got a lot of problems. And the only way the people can have a say is when they're in the driver's seat. If you're in the driver's seat at election time, if you don't get in the car, you can't drive. Yeah. Um, in South Central... In South Central L.A., we had our riots. Everybody knows about it. I've always uh, said that that was just the spark, this Rodney King situation. That was a spark that lit the flame. But, but there's a problem there. Do you understand what's going on? Do you understand why that happened? I think I understand some of why it happened. A teacher told me after it occurred when I was here with your congresswoman, Maxine Waters, mm -hmm. in her home, this teacher said to me, now, after we cleaned up this mess that the riots caused, let's clean up the mess that caused the riots. Yeah. And I thought that was the best one-liner to describe where we ought to be going. you got millions of people in this country today who just don't feel connected to the life the rest of us want to live. I mean, you tell them to register and vote, get an education, and go to work, and they say, may not have a job, but if I deal drugs, I can make money. Uh, you tell them that they ought to register and vote, and they say, why? I'll still be unsafe on my streets. Uh, you tell them to register and vote, and they look at most people in South Central L.A. Uh, they obeyed the law. They didn't loot. They didn't burn. They didn't riot. They didn't steal. But a lot of them are still living below the poverty line, even though they're working 40 hours a week. So there are real problems there that have divorced a whole lot of Americans from the rest of us. And... I think what this election's about, in a way, is reconnecting more folks to the American dream, making them feel like they're a part of our community, and making them feel that tomorrow can be better than today. There are too many people that don't feel part of the community and that are convinced that tomorrow won't be better than today. And, you know, I hardly ever meet an American who's not worried about something about the future. Yeah. You know, when I, when I think about racism, I always, as a black man, I always think about the racism I experienced. During the riots, I realized that there a lot of kinds of racism we're suffering from racism against a lot of different peoples we uh, we we all hate each other for something you know the, we we noticed the korean situation we noticed the anger at just white faces no matter who they were uh we've always seen the hostility towards black faces no matter who they are how do we deal with racism in america because it's getting out of hand i think we got to do two things First of all, we've got to find ways to people, for people to talk to each other again on a regular, consistent basis, 
not just across racial lines, but across income lines. Mm -hmm. That is, you and I can live in an integrated society, but it'd be a fairly narrow stratum. Mm -hmm. But if you go to South Central LA or most places in America, most working people and low income people, they don't have the kind of interracial contacts that people who are in a stronger income group have. So you've got to have basic contacts. Second thing we've got to realize is that a lot of the racism that was raging in Los Angeles dealt with what people don't do rather than what they do. People that feel like they don't even exist to people of other races until they walk in a department store and people follow them around to make sure they don't steal anything. Mm -hmm. But day in and day out, they get up, they trudge through their lives, they live in substandard housing on unsafe streets, they work their guts out, they fall further behind. Nobody even knows they're there until there's a riot. So I think that in the 90s, this whole business of economic empowerment has got to be at the center of the civil rights movement. You've got to have a lot of the problems just relate to, like the tensions between the African American and the Korean community. Mm -hmm. I talked to a lot of black folks who are convinced that the Koreans get preferential treatment at banks. For loans, except. For loans. But what they don't know is those folks have an entrepreneurial culture. They work together. They loan each other money. They, they come out of a culture that favors small businesses. Most of the black families that moved to Los Angeles, when they did, came out of the South and came here for manufacturing jobs. When the manufacturing jobs went away, there was only small business, and, and nobody stepped in and said, here's how you get a loan. We're going to make sure that the loans are made in this community. We're going to make sure you learn how to manage these businesses and create markets. None of that was ever done. So I think a lot of the problem is these folks are just invisible to each other until they raise hell, and you can't run a country that way. We've got to know we're around all the time. Yeah. Um, let's take a quick commercial and come right back with Governor Bill Clinton.